ever since Tom Friedman's book, The Earth is Flat, and I know you've all read that one, there's been a common belief that since people are now so interconnected through business and technology, differences are no longer important. I run into this attitude frequently. We're all technologists or finance people or biotech people or lawyers. We speak a common language of our profession. Cultural differences are just a little bit of insignificant local color and noise. But then what happens? In spite of all the intelligence and effort we put into our global undertakings, things don't always work out the way we think they should. Working globally turns out not to be all that smooth and seamless. There's the personal exhaustion of multiple time zones and being on call 24 seven and the wear and tear of travel. Then there's the logistical and legal complexities of dealing with different business and legal systems. And of course, the constantly shifting considerations of risk and opportunity. But in addition, there's layers and layers of cultural complexity. It turns out that the world isn't completely flat. National differences, cultural differences, multicultural diversity, they're all real. And they can trip up even those of us who think we're well prepared. Let me share you, with you three brief stories that will probably resonate with some of your experiences. First, a classic story of, in business negotiations. An Israeli IT team was presenting an enterprise software overhaul proposal to an established family-owned firm in Brazil. Could just as well have been India. They were enthusiastic about the business they could make. As they discussed their solution, they became quite vocal in their critique of the Brazilian company's existing systems. They thought they were respecting the intelligence of the potential client by being direct and forthright. You can see what's coming. For the Brazilians' point of view, this was a disrespectful way to speak to a, cli a client. You can imagine how that business deal went. Second, a story I hear routinely from US project managers who work with teams in India. It's the virtual teaming meeting at which having presented a plan or an idea, the leader asks, any questions? Any comments? And what follows is complete silence. Chup, bilkul chup. From the US leader's point of view, the silent means that everybody has understood and is in agreement, right? The team members in India, on the other hand, are waiting to be personally called on to comment, or they don't want to show that they haven't fully understood, or they're hesitant to challenge anything the leader has said, or they're waiting for their local leader to talk on behalf of them. Different assumptions about what's normal that end up creating unnecessary confusion and losses in productivity. My last story is one I hear from global professional friends of Indian background who have had most of their formative educational and work experiences in the US and are presented with a great business or career opportunity in India to be repats, to reverse the brain drain, to go back and build the new India and to get away from the stresses of present day America. For all of those who make a success of it, there are countless others for whom the experiment doesn't work. They are too acculturated to how things are done here to really be happy with and adapt fully to things, how things are done there. They struggle for some time and eventually return to Silicon Valley. <laughs>